Thanks, Rob. All right, folks, so um, the next panel is gonna be our Operators and Excellence panel, and so we're gonna bring them on board. These are five ISV partners that have developed operators, and not just any operator, but operators that are really um, advanced capability operators. And not only that, they're also operator certified. So what we wanted to do is, I'm gonna call uh, each of our um, panelists. We actually are awarding for the first time ever our um, Operator Excellence Awards. The panelists will be award winners this year. Um, so when I call your name or your company's name, if you could come up, receive your award, and then go ahead and take a seat, and then we'll go get started with the rest of the panel. So our first award recipient is Couchbase. Evan Pease, are you here? Not yet. We'll go to the next one. Our second award winner is Dynatrace. Peter Hack, are you here? Excellent. All right. Come on in. <laughs> Ready? All right. The third award winner, MongoDB, Jason Mimic. Are you here? Excellent. Jason. The fourth award winner, Portworks, Payush Nimbalkar. Excellent. All right. And the fifth uh, and final award winner for this year, for 2019, Storage OS, Simon Kroom. Are you here? So one uh, last call for Couchbase, is Evan here? I haven't seen him, so. Nope, all right, no worries. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Rob and we'll continue on with our panelist discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, everybody, congratulations. So uh, I just wanted to underscore the importance of um, that capability model and uh, building the maturity of the operator ecosystem is really important for um, both the customers of these companies to be successful building these operators and uh, using them on their clusters, as well as like building the next wave of Kubernetes growth. You know, we kind of are in the um, stateless applications. We went to very simple stateful workloads with stateful sets, uh, which based on the poll earlier today, not a ton of you are using um, yet anyways. Um, and that third wave is now full distributed systems running on Kubernetes of which you know, all of these um, cloud-native databases, uh, NoSQL databases, every message queue, um, all the security products, everything is getting a little bit more complicated, and it, it means that you need operational expertise in running that, or you defer to one of these really awesome operators to do that for you. Um, and so it's a game changer for consuming applications on Kubernetes and consuming a new product on Kubernetes. Um, and so that's super, super important, so we're really happy to work with all of these folks um, and their teams to make that happen. Um, so let's just go down and introduce yourself, um, give us an idea of what you do, and then we'll continue. Uh, hello. Cool. Hi, my name is uh, Peter Hack. I work for Dynatrace. I'm a technical evangelist there, and I focus mainly on uh, working closely with Red Hat and uh, the Kubernetes frameworks. Thanks. Am I on? Hey, hi, my name is Jason Mimic. I'm a product manager at MongoDB. And I guess I've been working with Red Hat and, the, and Kubernetes for a couple of years now. We didn't have an operator up until about a year ago. Um, we released it, but before that, it, we just had like an OpenShift template and, and things like that. So it's been great working with, with Rob and the team and seeing it really mature. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Hello. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, I'm Piyush. Uh, I'm a developer at Portworks. I lead the operator effort, effort in Portworks. Uh, hi, I'm Simon Kroom. Uh, I run the engineering team at Storage OS. Uh, we've had our operator for about a year now, um, and it's totally transformed the way we uh, ask our customers to install our product and to manage it from there, there onwards. Awesome. That's what we like to hear. All right, uh, first question, uh, Piyush, this is to you. Um, 
I saw when I was uh, doing some research for this that Portworx has this config generator um, for OpenShift 4 to help you uh, come up with your spec for um, what you pass into the operator. Tell us about that. How did that come about, and uh, how do your customers use that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so when we first started uh, deploying Kubernetes, which was more than two years ago, uh, we had we used to deploy it as a daemon set. Like Portwork used to get installed as daemon set. And then there were other, slowly we started adding components, like config maps, different permissions. So it's a huge spec, and people don't want to look at that spec. So we came up with a spec generator where people could just choose some parameters, uh, like select their storage, network, and this just by clicking on some checkboxes, Dropbox, fill in some fields, and they'll get a huge Kubernetes spec. And they just have to apply that spec and install Portwox. But with, that, with operators, it's just a 20-line spec that they, have, they can even handwrite it. They don't have to use the spec generator. But we, that's, that was the reason why we added the spec generator. Awesome. Yeah, hopefully we can get that wired up with the new um, declarative UI that I just showed. Um, that got to be super popular as well. We, just, yeah, we are actually doing that already. We are working with Ali to improve the UI so that people don't have to go to the spec generator and create their spec. They can just use the OpenShift UI and be there. Awesome. Perfect. All right, this one is for um, Jason for MongoDB. Um, can you talk about how your operator has helped customers embrace like this kind of container-native, cloud-native world? Um, you mentioned that you know, the operator's been in existence for a short while now. Um, how are customers embracing that? How is it helping them? Well, there, there's certainly a ton of in interest. Um, I mean, I'd say, like I said, in the past two years that we've really been active in this space, I mean, there hasn't been a week gone by that I haven't got calls from new accounts or new customers that are interested in, in Kubernetes and running MongoDB in these environments. Um, and frankly, most of them are pretty confused. Uh, there's a relatively small subset that are uh, any experience with Kubernetes. Most of our customers are brand new. And so they really look to us to help, uh, you know, show them the right way and the, and, the, and the sort of certified way to run MongoDB in these environments. Um, what else is really confusing is like there's tons of MongoDB in Docker and, and containers and, and Kubernetes out there in open source, but like none of that came from MongoDB <laughs> um, until recently with, with our operator. Um, and so that's typically you know, more of our enterprise customers that really need that support and, and um, you know, uh, they can rely on, on a company to back it. But the operators just made it a lot easier. So if you look at, if you go to like, find just your random MongoDB deployment out there in Kubernetes, it's gonna be a lot of YAML like we were talking about. Now with the MongoDB operator, it reduces down to as little as nine or so for a simple MongoDB cluster. We have one CRD, so that makes it a lot simpler. Um, and a lot of people wanna run MongoDB as a service. This is the tool for these enterprises to actually offer their own Mongo database services inside their own uh, private data centers. Yeah, that's something that I've seen is really popular is, you know, especially when you get to these big banks and insurance companies and folks like that, they all have a central database team that's running, you know, pick whatever you want of a database, and yeah. they've got a, a bunch of DBAs that run it for you. Um, but they can offload their work to your expertise um, in the operator. Which yeah, is yeah, in a way, but like also the one, one other point I, I wanted to make was like our operator is kind of, un well, maybe not unique, but it has, um, basically it has our enterprise uh, management and monitoring solution called MongoDB Ops Manager that is more or less bundled with our operator because we already had a bunch of, te a bunch of features in that around automation and we could basically do what you know, um, what Kubernetes does in terms of managing the pods just with VMs and our own agents. So we took a lot of that feature and functionality and we kind of use it with our operator. But the neat thing is those DBA teams, they actually do get this like completely independent control plane where they can just look at the Mongo data, drill into collections and things like that. They don't even know that it's necessarily running in OpenShift um, so that you can have a nice separation of those, of those responsibilities. Awesome, yeah, that's what we need to get everybody to. That, that yeah. sounds perfect. All right, next question is for uh, Simon with Storage OS. Um, I'm curious, uh, we all know storage is really critical for the cluster, um, and your operator um, you know, is a big part of running a healthy storage tier. Can you talk about some of the features that the operator has to you know, keep your storage running uh, correctly and performant on an OpenShift cluster? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the, the operator SDK itself, um, apart from being a really good like, starting point with the scaffolding, 
uh, when you create your first operator. It, it includes a lot of uh, tooling around uh, testing as well. So not just unit testing, but being able to uh, describe all of the permutations of configurations, you're able to, through the operator um, uh, test framework, uh, test all those combinations. Um, uh, as, as well as that, um, it helps you run some end-to-end -end tests. So for example, deploying on various versions of Kubernetes and things like that. Um, we're able to uh, do performance regression testing. We're able to do more K, uh, we're able to do more K, ah, I had the wrong bit. We're able to do the, uh, more sort of uh, chaos monkey style testing uh, to ensure that um, uh, data is, is consistent. So for example, John Willis earlier was talking about um, uh, Merkle trees. We're able to, through block checksums, verify the integrity of replicas before we fail over to them. Awesome, yeah, I think that's the exact type of expertise that you know, we want to depend on these operators for instead of having to understand that about a storage layer even. Um, so that's super powerful and you, know, you get all that baked in release after release. All right, and uh, last but not least uh, for our first question, Peter, how are you doing? Um, so uh, your customers have praised your operator for its ease of use. Can you just talk about um, that experience and how you've designed it and um, what you're looking to do maybe in the future? Absolutely. So uh, Dynatrace comes out of the APM space and the monitoring, uh, enterprise monitoring. And what we've uh, developed this operator together with Red Hat when they were initially uh, bringing the operator to market, uh, that framework, we used that we created a Go operator. Uh, and the focus around Dynatrace is uh, being able to do it, like make it as easy as possible for our customers, right? We don't want our customers to have to really, th you know, have super expertise in, you know, their application code to try and uh, instrument things and such. So we, our goal was always to make it as easy to deploy the agent and get the and get the democratize the data that comes out of it. So our agent-based solution in the you know non-Kubernetes space it would be an install, but uh, because of the operator, instead of having to use a daemon set where you would have to you know take it down to you know to put up any updates or put up a new one, the uh, with the OLM and the operator basically through just two YAML files. You could have the entire operator deployed, uh, running in your entire cluster, uh, and the one agent or, or agent technology would automatically be deployed to all the nodes in the cluster, providing visibility into all the application stacks. So what this really drives for our customers is the providing monitoring as part of the platform, but deep monitoring end-to-end uh, -end full stack view of the entire cluster. Yeah, obviously a critical capability for any cluster. Yeah. Um, so we can turn this more into a little bit of free-for-all now. I want to touch on two topics that we um, visited earlier in the day um, around uh, GitOps and then uh, multi-cluster. And so let's start with multi-cluster. I'm just curious, um, any of you, uh, with your customers, are you seeing them run multiple clusters? And how is the operator helping them get that consistency between the clusters? Um, I, I could start. Sure. I mean, we most all of our customers are enterprise grade, you know, level customers uh, in the Fortune 500 or, or larger. Um, and uh, what we find is that hybrid is really kind of the, the way it's gone. It's, there's customers that have these large legacy data centers spread around their organization, but then they've you know, started to build out into a cloud, whether it be AWS or Google or Azure. And uh, having the ability through the operator to be able to kind of see all of the clusters and all of the nodes for those clusters uh, really gives us a, an ability to help monitor all of that across the board. So that's, uh, that's something that's, uh, that was critical for our customers as well as for, uh, for having the operator in, in the first place. Awesome. Anyone else, multi-cluster experience? Uh, well, I'll just say that, honestly, I haven't heard much about multi-cluster in a few months. A while ago, I had a, there was a lot of customers interested in it, and so we've kind of been following the, the SIG multi-cluster and seeing where that's going, um, but, I'm not really sure. I think the, the verdict is still out on if people, a lot of people are going to be using those. Um, you think, is the data gravity, is that what it is? Yeah, or what I'm is not it? really sure. I think there's just different camps. Some people, it's like a lot of clusters or one cluster. There's those different camps of people, so. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, obviously it should work seamlessly. That, that's the trick. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that continues. I think uh, what he said, uh, that's the problem we are trying to solve with storage. Uh, so we already support a lot of clouds like Google, Amazon, IBM, uh, Azure. And 
with this with kubernetes and the operators it it is a seamless experience for customers they can just run portworks without knowing they just tell us what capacity they need internally we go and provision the capacity and they can just migrate their apps using portworks from one cloud to another we have few customers who are running on multiple clouds and it really benefits them to have the same experience everywhere on all the clouds so yeah i think that's that solves the data gravity problem for for our customers for sure. Yeah, I, just to echo that, we certainly see a lot of customers with multiple smaller clusters and maybe shorter lived uh, than you might expect. So uh, providing tools to migrate the data is essential for, for supporting them. Awesome, yeah. So it sounds like storage layer, obviously, extremely critical for multi-cluster, for sure. Um, I actually, I have one other thing yeah, sure. about that. Like, we also, so we have MongoDB as a service, uh, MongoDB Atlas, which is fully hosted by us. But that is actually available. We have an open service broker for MongoDB Atlas um, that just came out this past summer. So in a way, because Atlas supports Google, GCP, and, um, and Azure, you could have multiple Kubernetes clusters that just consume Mongo services running in those same clouds. So functionally, there's a lot of ways I think you can get around some of those requirements that might not need actually you know, multi-cluster federation or something yeah. complicated like that. Good point. Uh, moving on to GitOps, so we saw um, an example of using uh, both MCM and Argo-based workflows for doing this. Um, one of the things that I think is really powerful about operators is when you do have these complex um, distributed applications or a storage layer um, it, that are made up of a ton of different uh, YAML objects, when you're doing like a PR review on a GitOps um, change, you can start looking, if, if it's an operator, really you're looking at one YAML file for this CRD that might represent a ton of changes under the hood, um, but you don't need to see that complexity. And so I think that's a really powerful um, way to do GitOps. And I'm curious if y'all are starting to see this with your customers. Are they doing these types of flows, or is that still more, it's the audience at KubeCon, but it hasn't made its way down into the Fortune 500, that kind of thing? As in, I haven't seen a lot of customers talking about this. Uh, maybe it's something we'll see in the future. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we certainly see a lot of customers use, uh, using CI/CD uh, as a primary use case, you know, with our product. Um, but if that, whether that's GitOps or not, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's quite come down to the to the common common folks right now, um, but. Uh, just internally at MongoDB, we have an, our own inter, uh, Kubernetes cluster that has a CI, CD, very similar. I mean, it's drone, but it's the same kind of thing. Um, and I can really see that model is, is really solid, I think. I mean, because we write code, we like source control. Why not put all that stuff in source control, too? It's great. Yeah, with uh, the GitOps uh, story is actually quite interesting. So, Dynatri you know, we have a lot of customers that have these very complex pipelines, um, large Jenkins or, or Concourse or whatever. And, uh, and so we started seeing kind of a pattern of the GitOps deployment. Like, how are they deploying their code when they deploy their code from stage to stage? How do they validate and quality test things like that? And so, I mean, I, I'm wearing this shirt, Capt, and this is an open source project that we started at Dynatrace to try and address this specific kind of issue around um, that GitOps story about the Git flow and, and the model. And, uh, and ideally, I, you know, I'm working with the team here to try and uh, build operators to do the deployment of Captain as well. So that, that should be, you know, I think that the, Git, the GitOps story, though, is becoming very, uh, it's bubbling up to the surface and it's becoming more uh, aware, to, awareness is coming yeah. up. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. It started with Terraform and the like on the infrastructure side, and it's moving its way up. All right, I think that's all we have for this panel today. Um, I want to give a, a warm congratulations to all of these companies. Check out their operators. They're on Operator Hub. They're inside of your OpenShift cluster. Um, if you need any of these services, um, you know, storage, databases, um, monitoring, security tools, um, queues, web servers, it's all out there. Um, so thank you all so much, and congratulations.